In this video, I want to show you how to use the product and product X DAX functions in Power BI. I want to explain to you how to use them step by step and also which scenarios to use them in the first place. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fennan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the product DAX function is not something that I actually use on a daily basis but it's good to know that it exists. So let's have a look at what it says on the documentation itself. So here's the description for the DAX function. It says that it returns the products of the numbers in a column. Now that description is not really helpful at all. <laughs> so let me show you how to use it instead. So let's go to this report that I've created here. It's a really, really simple uh, interest rates table. Um, and it has three columns year, the interest rate, which interest rate should be a percentage value, and then the net profit for those years. Now I kept them intentionally small for a reason. And I want you to focus on the net profit itself. So each year has a different value here. And uh, let's say we want to apply the product DAX function on this column. So we'll create a new measure here. So we'll name this product or net profit product. We'll type product here and we'll say, give me the product of the net profit column. We drag this here onto our measure and it will give us 120. Now, 120 is the product of the net profit. And this is multiplying on each of itself. So five times two times three times two times one times one times two is 120. Now, just to make sure that I'm not going crazy, let's verify that. So five times two times three times two times one times one times two, that will give me 120. So that is what it means um, to use the product DAX function. So basically, if you need to multiply row values easily and quickly, uh, the product DAX function is what you use for that. But now you're probably thinking, well, in what scenario do I be using the product function? So one scenario that you could use is to calculate uh, interest growth on investment. So I wanna just delete this measure that I've created here and we'll remove the net profit. And I want you to just focus on the year and the interest rates here on this table. So let's say you want to calculate your investment growth from a specific year to a specific year. And the interest rates varies depending on those different years. So let's say you invested 10 pounds in 2015. Now at the end of that year, that money would have grown 3%. So what you wanna know is the accumulative interest growth on that 10 pound investment from 2015 to 2021. So let's say you have 10 pounds in 2015 that grew 3%, so that will be 10 pounds 30. And then in 2016, it grew 2%. So it will be 2% uh, more from the 10 pounds 30 that was uh, in the previous year. And for this, we want to use the product X. Product X is just an iterator version of the product, meaning that you can add more filter context to the calculation. So in this case, because we want to calculate the products of the original investment multiplied by one plus the interest rate for that year, now, it sounds a little bit complicated, so I'll just write it in a measure so you can see what I mean. So if I create a new measure here, we'll say this one is called investment growth. Uh, so first we want to write down the initial investment. So let's say we want 10 pounds. And then we want to write product X here. So just imagine product is the same as product, except that we can add more parameters to it. So in this case, we want to say the table I'm interested in is the interest rates. And then we want to do one plus the interest rates. If we click enter, that should be it. So let's go and put this on a visual here. So there we go. 
So your 10 pounds in 2015 would have grown to 12 pounds 90 if you left it there accumulating interest rates until 2021. Now to confirm this is a little bit tricky to do manually, but we'll, we'll try our best. So uh, first we'll create uh, maybe a year uh, filter here, just so that we can see how that changes over time. So here in our filter, I filtered it just to 2015 and we know that 3% of 10 pounds is 30 pence. So in total, the interest or the growth of your investments on that year is only 10 pounds 30. So now that we've increased the year to 2016, it's given us 10 pounds 51. Uh, that is the interest or your investment growth from 2015 to 2016. Now the 2% that it says here is not 2% of 10 pounds, but in fact is the 2% of the 10 pounds 30 that was accumulated and gained from last year. And that's the whole point of the product. It is, tries to calculate the accumulative growth of your investments uh, compared to the previous years. Now, I'm just gonna do a quick Google search, 2% uh, of 10 pounds 30. So the 2% of 10 pounds 30 is 0 0.206. Now, if we add that by 2 pounds 30, that will give us 10.506 or in short 10.51, which is exactly what we have here. So let's just confirm that to make sure that that is correct. So we're just gonna add three decimal places here. And there you go. So it matches exactly as we thought. So that is how you calculate the interest rate growth of your investments using the product tax function. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to start using the products and product X DAX functions in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.